English Premier League in the country that gave birth to the game is the most watched league in the world. But it's widely accepted that atmospheres in English grounds have been in decline for a while. But at one ground that's always been known to be fairly loud, the fans of one club have been looking to Europe for tips on how to buck the trend. Sellers Park, Crystal Palace. Since 2005, Sellers Park has been home to the only self-titled ultra group in the upper tiers of English football. The Homesdale fanatics have brought continental-style support to South London. Nick Philpot has been watching Palace for over 40 years. He's seen plenty of changes since the Homesdale fanatics arrived on the scene. Every home game now is you know, full of vibrance, full of noise, full of passion, flags. And the occasional TIFO, also a novelty in the English game. Although some have been more popular than others. You might not want to include that because it looks like a couple of cocks at either end of the Homesdale. <laughs> and, and it really did. The classic example though, the real example of that is the Wembley display uh, for the 2016 Cup final. It was something that had never happened before. It was outstanding. The display that they put on, Wembley had never seen it before, and it's never happened again since. Everyone's so into it because it's, we all love Palace. We're all just here because we share the thing that we love Palace. It's nice that we can portray that in ways that other clubs can't. The drum, the flags, and the choreographed displays that the Homesdale Fanatics have brought to Sellers Park are all fairly unique in English football. They're hallmarks of European-style support that's never really caught on in the UK. Italy, Germany, uh, even France to a degree, Holland, okay, where the ultra culture is really, is really established, okay? Here in the UK, it's not. What you get here is what you get in Germany at every game. Yeah. You don't get it anywhere else in, in the country. It may not be on the level of uh, the German ultras, the Italian ultras, it may not be on that level, but for the UK products, it's second to none. Obviously, the fact that England doesn't have any ultras doesn't mean that English football doesn't have its own terrace traditions. Humour and spontaneity on the stands are hallmarks of fan culture in the UK and support in British stadia. I, I, I love the humour, that's part of the reason why I go. Like, yeah. I don't just go to see Palace win, I just go for the, the banter. But European ultra-style songs tend to be a bit light on lyrics and banter, as Palace fans are finding out. They've obviously gone to see the, their European counterparts and looked at what they're doing song-wise. And there has been introductions of our own specific songs, and some could even describe a couple of them as, do you know what, a little bit dirged. Still, that certainly doesn't mean that there are no laughs to be had. <laughs> Fans up and down the UK have had their fun with the Homesdale fanatics. Not least when Palace played away at Doncaster in the FA Cup. Or at least it was in the Palace end. Fucking hell, stay in. I don't know what I'm saying today. Like, he's probably got the right intentions, but does he really need to have his face covered up in a cup game at Doncaster? Each to their own, isn't it? <laughs> you can't really say what you. That's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. Most of what I see and read on social media is born out of jealousy because there is a lot of other fans would love to have the vibrant atmosphere that we have at Sellers Park. The next station is Selhurst. We thought we'd give Sellers Park and Palace the best chance possible to show us their brilliant atmosphere, so we've come to the Derby, which for some reason is against Brighton. Dates back to Alan Mallory, which um, you might want a bit of a history lesson on that one. You know, it's a real rivalry, there's a real intensity to it. The M23 Derby. Okay, it's not the M23 Derby. Please do not refer it to the M23 Derby. We call it the Palace Brighton Derby. Oh. We, we live in Brighton. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, we've we, we driven, we driven up to Brighton this morning. Um, so. It probably yeah. means more to us than a lot of people because yeah. of the stick we're going to get when we go home if we lose. <laughs> Don't give me your Liverpool Everton. Don't give me your Man United, Man City, OK? They are your rivals, OK? In, in your case, don't give me uh, Aston Villa versus the Blues, OK? Come to Sellers Park and see the, the bile that's actually spouted out by the fans, OK? It'll be 
a cracking atmosphere. We're now at uh, East Corden Station on our way to the pub and it's half seven in the morning. Some things about a derby day, match day, are fairly constant everywhere. Early kickoff, early meet, if you're lucky, pint with breakfast. I tell you what, mate, if Brighton turn up now, we're sitting ducks, mate. Keep your eyes on the fire escape. Palace's rivalry with Brighton might have history, but their ground goes back far further. They've played in the same place in South London for almost a hundred years. Atmospheres in English football have suffered in recent decades. The fact that lots of clubs have left their old grounds and moved to identikit bowls on the outskirts of their cities hasn't helped. Well, you go to these, these plastic stadiums full of plastic yep. fans and um, it's just void. It's void of any atmosphere. You go to the Walker's Stadium, you go to uh, the Emirates, you go to any of these new grounds, OK, and they're boring. Like, where was it we went the other way? Oh, Huddersfield. It was just an awful place. Liverpool was absolutely appalling. Brighton's absolutely. appalling. But that's never been a problem for Palace. I think nothing nothing compares to Palace. Palace. In a world where there are a Premier League that's full of soulless bowls, this is a proper football ground. <laughs> The beauty about Sellers Park, and there is no beauty about Sellers Park, because it's a rundown old dog, and it's, but it's our rundown old dog, and we love it. Okay, the beauty about it is it's an original stadium and creates the volume. The atmosphere, yeah, it's something special at Sellers, it really is. It's Sellers Park, it's the atmosphere, isn't it? When this place is rocking, there is no place in the country like it. You get inside there, oh you're going to feel it. <laughs> But while Selhurst Park is an old ground in a traditional English style, its loudest inhabitants have been taking tips from the continent. Turns out, though, that pyrotechnics are pretty unpopular with British police, as the fanatics found out. Little minor, uh, little minor, little minor scuffle to be fair, just on the way up to the ground. I say, Chef, for marching up. But I have to say, mate, the march is fairly impressive. To be fair. The uh, high road, the smoke bombs down at the bottom of the road, the march up to the uh, turnstile, and the noise was, and they announced their presence in pretty solid style. Inside the ground, the Fanatics beat out a rhythm which is hardly ever heard in English football stadium. But they're flying their nest from their place in the corner. As of next season, the Fanatics will be behind the goal in Selhurst Park's Homesdale end after they forced through a move from their current position over in the corner of the ground. Now, the group achieved that move in part through protest, withdrawing their support for much of this season as their dispute with the club continued. That boycott and the fact that the current occupants, season ticket holders, in some cases long-standing season ticket holders in Block E, are going to have to be displaced, have ruffled plenty of feathers among other Eagles supporters. When the Fanatics disappeared from the ground, their boycott seemed almost universally unpopular. One of their taglines is, OK, no matter what. That's one of their taglines. They the support the team no matter what. Mm -hmm. Unless they don't get what they want. I think it's a good thing that a solution has been sorted, but then I think it's a bad thing that people are having to move for it. I think it's a bad thing the way they went about doing it. And toys being thrown out the pram. I think that's really what happened. The sight of organised supporters protesting and holding firm until they get what they want is rare in English football. But their unpopular boycott was a success and the Fanatics have got what they were after. What's quite, what's quite apparent these days in football is player power, OK? What we've seen a great example with, uh, with the Homes of Fanatics is actually fan power. They had a lot of support from European ultras as well. I mean, generally, if you had to say was it positive or negative, what they did and what they achieved was positive. 
The central singing section in the Holmesdale end into which the Fanatics will be moving can't come soon enough for the fans who have now seen Palace get beaten by Brighton twice in one season. Yeah, I think it's fair play to the Fanatics for getting something started and for importing something that is, you know, works brilliantly in stadiums and other places around the world. Even when the rest of the crowd is pretty dampened, for example, after Brighton just put themselves 2-1 up, you can still see that the Fanatics are making noise. Yeah, as derbies go, I've seen better. <laughs> for me, the attraction about this place is still the fact that it's just a sick, old-style English football ground. And it might not be the last English football ground to see the arrival of European support. We're, we're not quite the same as Ajax or PSG yet, but we started in the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we definitely started it off. I think in English football, I'd like more, more singing sections and cultures, more like atmospheres. Over the course of the next two or three years, more stadiums will do what we're doing, okay? I just want it to be organic as opposed to manufactured, okay? The more stadiums that do it, the better for English football. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>